Welcome back to another video, Legends, and we've got the Nighthawk Stealth F1 Concepts by Full Earth Workshop. You're probably thinking, Trav, I've already seen this, but guess what? We have a revision copy. We've had some changes made to it, which is very exciting. We're gonna talk about the car itself, show you what you get inside this beautifully designed box, and then we're gonna put it around our track. So stick around and let's check out the revised version of Full Earth's Nighthawk Stealth F1 Concept. Let's go. So before we dive headfirst into the unboxing and check out some of this beautiful box art by Dr. Contrast, let's go way back to where it all started, to the one of one, the prototype, the dream car. This is it. It's got a nice plastic model kit on top and a very different designed chassis. Now there's a couple of cues to the new one. We've got the steerable front end. It used to be called the Hammerhead, but it's good to see the evolution of this car. And I do want to thank Douglas from Full Earth Workshop because he's allowed me to keep this in my collection and it is one of one. This is where the dream started and I'm very privileged to have it. But now let's look at the evolution. Now if you haven't seen the original version, this is the original car we did which was going to go on sale. We've got some changes to it now to make it perform better, a bit more user friendly. So this one we'll have a look at in a tick. We'll make some change differences when you get inside. But let's check out the box art. And straight away, I'm a massive fan of box art. This is impressive. A nice big size box. You've got the Full Earth Workshop logo, Dr. Contrast all over it. You can see his design of the McLaren livery Stealth F1 concept car, the Nighthawk 124 scale. Really beautiful looking box. Now, I'm a big fan of the Shella. It's grown on me. It's not a licensed car. So they've thought outside the square and they've come up with a bit of a futuristic look on an F1 Formula style car. Really cool. I think it looks good. Over to the side, we've got a layout of the chassis and, and it's marking all the parts and pieces. Another good touch. I think that is a must from any slot car provider. The only major difference with the box up, let's bring in the original is this one was numbered. It was one of 100. 100 of these were gonna be on sale. And of course, they've now done some upgrades to it. And this is a sample. So not everything that you will see that I'll be talking about comes in this box, but if you do purchase one, it's what you will be getting. And it's now time to dive in and take a look. So let's open it up. And I do like the box. Straight away, let's go and give a throw to Dr. Contrast, the designer. As you can see here, some concept drawings. You might see some cars you recognize. Yes, the man is very serious when it comes to design and a bit of a blur, blurb about him. Really cool, great person to have on a slot car. And of course, wearing the McLaren colors is cool as. Now this is how it comes, plastic wrapped. I haven't opened it, I haven't even touched it yet. I've been waiting to do it on video. Got some magnets here. If you have seen the first one, this will all make sense. If you haven't, it will make sense during the video. There is a bit of a different color scheme here. I think there's some uh, livery designs that have changed. We'll have to take a look at that in a tick. And we've also got the chassis, which is where a lot of the major changes are. And I'll quickly point them out. We've got some uh, back ends of the screws now, so it makes sure it holds the pieces in place. And it looks like we've got a redesigned rear end with a magnet and that diffuser look has gone. Again, this will all make sense when we put them side by side with the original, which we'll do right now. Let's go. We'll take a close look at the old versus new to see what changes have been made. And you can already actually see the shells look a little bit different. We'll get to that in a tick. Let's talk about what you get in your kit. First up, you get an assembled chassis, which I have got. That's probably the most important thing. Thank you, Douglas. I do have an assembled chassis to show off. Very nice looking chassis as well. You do get a body decal sheet. Now I don't have that because mine have already been put on for me. Thank you to Full Earth Workshop for doing that, but you will get a sheet of decals, which you will put on your own shell itself. You also get the mag adapter plate, which is resting on top. I'll flip it over so you can see, got a couple of button magnets there. This will make sense very soon, but what it allows you to do is to affix it to another 124 scale chassis, or sorry, shell that you can affix to the car. So you're not always having to run the concept shell itself. So let's put that back on. And you also get a complete manual. Now I do bang on about box art, documentation. Well, this does have it all. With the documentation, it breaks down 
the parts of the car. That is always good to know what, how to rebuild the car, what makes up the car. Also the decal layout. So when you are affixing your decals to the shell itself, it will tell you where to put it. And the car specs, which is if you want to know about wheelbase and everything else, it's all in there for you to understand. Really cool. And I've got to finish off by saying it does look very beautiful. And of course, if Dr. Gontrast is uh, anyone to be involved, you know it's going to look good. Next up, mag adapter. This allows you to run 124 scale shells from other brands. Now we did briefly touch on that. As you can see, I've got one that's already affixed to it. You will have to drill a couple of little holes on the side, affix it inside your chosen shell, which you can then take off and put back on. And that will, once your wheelbase is set up properly, fit on to the chassis. Now, if you have watched my original video of the original Stealth, we did do that. We ran it with the Corvette. We will do that again today in today's review, but that's cool. It gives you options, it allows you to run other cars. The slot guide has uh, self-centering. So if, if the guide itself, it, it won't hopefully stick fully left or fully right. So that should help you put it back into the guide. These are some points that Douglas has asked me to speak about, but as you can see, it does kind of bounce back to where it needs to be. I mean, is that a big issue? I guess if you're marshalling, I tend to grab it and turn it myself before I put it back down, but at least you know it might come back. So there you go, a little point that uh, Douglas asked me to point out that they've thought about with the design itself. The Stealth chassis has an adjustable wheelbase of 20 millimeters. Now, how you do that is by unloosening this nut here, which on the other side, you do have an Allen key style, I believe, or it's a hex drive, one of the two. And then it allows you to draw that in and out, allowing you to run different shells. And as you can see here, if we adjust that, it will allow us to then run this. We will do that. Later on, we'll test both the Corvette and the Stealth, which we had done in the original. What else do we have? The Stealth chassis has three parts to the chassis itself. So at the front here, we have the steering module, which makes complete sense. You can see it's a one part. Undo that and all your steering module can come off. You've also got the other two, which will be your pan chassis, which is right here. And then you've got your motor or your power module, which is your rear end. So it's a three part chassis, all comes apart with the screws that have been affixed to it. So you can take this thing completely apart. But let's talk about that. I wanna talk about how this has been made. So the pan chassis itself and the power uh, module has been done in a, let me get this right, a PETG and a carbon fiber. Yes, we've got carbon fiber within this car. So these two, the parts in blue, are PETG and carbon fiber, which <laughs> when you think about slot cars, that is pretty crazy. And then your steering front end is done in a, a nylon. So we've got two different parts to the car. So these center the pan and the power module are in your pegt carbon fiber and the front is in your nylon again something cool to point out there you can say that you're driving a carbon fiber slot car next up let's talk about the steerable front end the original also had that i had some issues with the steerable front end which i believe there's been some adjustments to that which is good to see the brand is listening. It's really good to see. Uh, do you like steel before front end? Don't you like steel before front end? That is up to you to decide. I did disconnect mine originally, but of course we'll be testing it as is. But it is good to know that they've thought about a different style of chassis. Is it new? No, it has been done before, but they are going with the steerable front end. Another new concept to this chassis or an add-on is the added magnet at the rear. So if you are going mag racing, you wanna add a magnet, you can add one, you can take it out, put it in, it's on the rear end. Now the magnet they are using is the slotted bar magnet. So if you do wanna purchase one to put it in, that's what you need, the slotted bar magnet. The original, if we flip that upside down, only had a diffuser end, no magnet at all. So that was a non-mag car. This can be, but it also can have a magnet. I'm excited to try that with the magnet in. I will try it as tested. So we'll see how this one goes with the magnet in. So if you are wanting it, it is a slotted bar magnet. So let's talk about the wheels now. They have made a point here, third party polymer or metal wheels. If you are using them, you use the 27 millimeter tire. So that is good to know if you are changing the, the wheels themselves, polymer or metal. 
use a 27 mil tire. I did not have any issues last time with the tire setup on the original. I actually quite enjoyed how it drove. It was very old school, but there you go. So some stats there, of course. In the handout, it would have all the stats of the car. So if you want to get down and deep and dirty with it, you can actually get to know the car from front to end. And let's talk replacements. A lot of people do ask me about replacement parts with every brand. Well, the good thing is here, they've relied on some decent companies to get your spares from now, or sorry, your replacements. Now, if you are wanting them, you can go to fullearthworkshop.com or you can get them from uh, h and Racing, Slot Invasion and Slot It. So it's good that they've incorporated brands on their build so you know you are getting quality parts when you want to replace them. So that is your upgraded shell. So before we take it for a test run, let's look at the shells first. Now they are different colors, as you can see here. This one is a gloss, I don't know if that has been painted after the fact, and this one has gone with a matte black. Now when it comes to the decal sheet, you can see we are missing the big rear section here, and the sides appear to be the same, but I'm actually liking the matte black. Let me know in the comments, what do you think? Do you like the gloss or the matte black? This is the original, I am liking this. I think that's a beautiful upgrade. It looks stealthy now, really stealthy. But now let's bring in the shell, so we're gonna have a visual on the differences. Now please keep in mind, since my testing, I have done, or my review I should say, I've been doing a lot of testing on it, I've taken it apart, tried different things, to then relay information back to Full Earth to say what I found, what was wrong with it, and some of the add-ons that they may think about doing. So some you have seen put on here. Firstly, let's talk about the front end. Now I have taken away your steering arm, which doesn't allow this to steer, because I had issues with the thread. Now we had some uh, screws or threads going through here and by uh, 10 or 20 laps, it was starting to pull through. They were relying on the thread internally to hold the screw itself, which it didn't work. Um, I'm happy to say we have now got some backing nuts. So hopefully after testing and doing numerous laps, which I definitely will put this through the test over the next coming weeks, the, the nut will hold together tightly, which will then allow the front end to do what it was designed to do, and that's turn. So sticking to the underside, let's have a look at some of the differences. You can already see by the power module or where the motor is sitting, gray versus blue, of course, I believe they are now different print styles. Um, I don't remember this being in carbon fiber, I could be wrong. At the rear here, you've also got an atom magnet and this had the rear diffuser, that has definitely been redesigned. I think this is a good move. Having a magnet, not having a magnet, that's up to you now to decide. If you're finding it's too tail happy, you can throw a magnet in. If you don't want to use it, take it out and you can pretend it wasn't there. Also, you've got the flathead screws underneath here. As you can see, we've now got the backing, looks like a, a hex style. Is it a hex or is it a Allen key style screw, which is now backed on the front. If you can look around here, I think it's gonna just probably hold a bit better. When it comes to the overside, which we're looking at now, the front side, it appears to be pretty much the same layout. You've got your four magnets that will take your body. The front end appears to have this change over from using the flat heads to these nuts, which I think is a good move. And the adjustment in the center looks to be the same. Now, let me have a quick look at this one because I have taken some stuff off it. I'm just making sure I don't miss out on any of the finer details. Let's have a quick look at this one as well. You will notice the spring is here. I did take my spring out because I was no longer using the steerable front end, which means I wasn't really worrying about this centering itself. So we do have the spring in there. You've got the negative and positive running through the center. When I received this one last, I believe it was running, as you can see, through the outside or through the steering arms. But other than that, some slight changes. It looks like some print quality differences. The rear end has been adjusted and we've sorted out some of those uh, nut thread problems on the front. But now, I think, we affix the shell and we take the stealth for a ride. So this video is a little bit long on the tooth, so stay tuned for part two for some track action. Bye.